There are a lot of things overrated about tractors, and I gave you a full list of those a few years ago, but we've got a new list today. Might have changed my mind on a couple of things, but we're gonna tell you all about those today. So when you're shopping for a new tractor, could be your first one, could be a new one. Maybe you just have, you know, an old Ford 9N and you wanna get a new modern day compact tractor. There's so much information to sift through, what's good, what's bad. That's what these videos are all about. Give you, well, yeah, it is just another man's opinion, but we do get a lot of comments down below too on, on things that folks agree with and some that they don't. So the 2022 overrated tractor edition coming to you now. All right, so this is really about tractor attachments as well, and to kind of take that, well, just the, the paralysis by analysis effect out of the whole situation, and that's gonna be with time length, all right? And you're gonna see videos out there, guys, get 36, get 42, get 48, wherever the heck it is, and at the end of the day, you know, having forks is a lot better than not having them. Um, you know, there's there's rarely a situation when, uh, you know, the, the, the small difference between a 36 and a 42, or a 42 and a 48 is gonna make that big of a difference. You can still put any of those time lengths underneath a pallet and pick that up and move it around. You know, a lot of times if you are gonna have a smaller tractor, lean towards the shorter size, maybe a, a 36 or a 42 inch option. If you have a bigger tractor, just go with the 48s, but if you want 42s, maybe for storage, okay, that, that too, but don't overthink it. They're all gonna get the job done at the end of the day. Typically the price difference is gonna be pretty small, so maybe if, if we have them or somebody else that you're looking at has them in stock and only one size, not the other, I really personally wouldn't lose a whole lot of sleep about that. You're gonna be good to go either way. Tier four emissions or regen is another really common topic that folks bring up and wanting to avoid it. Um, in the tractor world, 25 horsepower tractors and, and under, well, I should say under 26 horsepower, do not have to have that regen or that emission system on there. You know, the thought being, and, and really from the construction world, from uh, the diesel trucking world, where those systems were really problematic, it is not so much in the tractor world, of, it's not that big of a deal. And you will, of course, since it's a system, you will hear of folks out there that have had problems with it, but they're few and far between. Um, all the manufacturers come with a six year warranty on that emissions portion of the of the tractor. So you have a lot of coverage there. I used to sell an absolute boatload of tractors. I've I've sold a lot of tractors and I can't think of a single time where I've ever had to take a tractor in for a emissions related issue. You know, so this tractor here, this green one, this John Deere, the 2038R has it. These other couple small ones don't. The bigger guy, uh, the Kubota has it. And you know, it's just a cycle that runs periodically, typically every 50 to 100 hours, depending on how you're using it, it's there. It does drive the cost up of the equipment, but you can't get a 38 horsepower tractor new that doesn't have that system on there. You can go pre-emissions, which is typically 2011 and older. There's a little bit of wiggle room there, but you have to go really old at this point to get a pre-emissions tractor and they're getting harder and harder to find. So I think the market is just getting more and more used to that's a system that's gonna be on there for good or for bad. Buying a big name, you know, a John Deere Kubota for parts and for service and for reputation, everything else that goes along with it. Well, you know, I'm not, I, I don't want this to sound like a sellout comment because I still do think that these two brands here are kind of the, the premium echelon. However, I think the pandemic has brought some other things to light of, of how challenging even a major brand can be. Uh, getting service done, getting parts, they hit the same exact problems that a smaller brand does. And it could be Summit, it could be uh, Coyote, it could be LS, New Holland, um, Royal King, any of those other brands that are out there. It's funny because it kind of, leveled that whole playing field, right? Because so many parts for these tractors, it doesn't matter the brand, are coming from overseas somewhere. And so there's these long lead times and they're out of stock and supply chain is still a very real issue. And the technicians. <laughs> technicians. <laughs> At, at a lot of these different dealerships. And not just I'm not just saying this is the local ones, but I get a lot of communication from customers all around the country major issues with, with quality technicians, um, even finding technicians in general. So uh, things that have to go back over and over to get repaired, things that um, you would think they would know, a technician would know how to repair that they're, they're leaning more heavily on trying to get John Deere involved or Kubota involved. So my pre-pandemic and post-pandemic um, well, I guess perspective has changed quite a bit with the advantage that I would have thought the major players had compared to some of the, the smaller or maybe lesser known brands. Folks, we are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden, 
We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. OEM attachments are definitely overrated, all right? And this could be with John Deere, Kubota, um, New Holland, Massey, whatever whatever brand it is. And the reason that is is, is, is not because those attachments are bad, right? But you're overpaying oftentimes for those attachments because, well, and you'll even see this in, in, in Frontier with John Deere is a pretty good example where a lot of their stuff will actually have a, a, a data plate on it, a nameplate that says a different manufacturer like Machio uh, on there for tillers. I used to have one of those. I can't remember if I have a video of that or not, but um, it's pretty interesting because they will just have another manufacturer and I work with a lot of these guys um, that make the attachments for them and just paint them, you know, John Deere green, for example, and then <laughs> drive the price up. And so many times you can get the same attachment, the same quality, but for a cheaper price, if you're okay, not having that, that OEM name brand on there. And then again, there are also other cases where an aftermarket company makes a better attachment than OEM. And we did something, uh, well, we've done a couple videos with, with, we like to pick on Frontier. It's, it's, it's kind of fun. So there's Snow Pusher, for example, comparing that to HLA Snow Pusher, the Frontier, in my opinion, is completely inferior. Um, they're brush hogs too, the same kind of thing versus Dirt Dog, which is another aftermarket company. You know, it's good for these, these other companies to exist just from the perspective of, of pushing the OEMs to try to keep getting better. And, and oftentimes they're okay just sitting on their haunches and the aftermarket world has lower overhead, can put more features, more desire, more focus on a smaller market of products and give customers a better value. And some ad related to that would be paint color because I can tell you one thing, your tractor does not give a rip what paint color your attachments are. You know, that's one of the benefits, I suppose, of going with the OEM is that you are gonna have your matching green paint or your orange paint. And, you know, for us, we can get a lot of our attachments in matching colors, but it's, it's very challenging from an inventory management perspective, the amount of inventory that you'd have to carry for green and for orange and for red and for blue. So we've just kind of gone with a neutral color ourselves to make life easy. You know, the three-point hitch, at least, is typically black or gray, so the entire machine's not gonna be orange or green, so you can work with it. But if you're dead set on having matching paint, we can certainly order that for you, as long as you have time to wait. Tractor modifications to increase the horsepower, increase the capacity, in my opinion, are overrated, right? And it's not that I don't think it's cool. I like tricking things out. I like souping things up and everything else, but I think for most folks out there that, that are looking to get more power out of their machine, could be running into trouble because there are oftentimes unintended consequences that come from that. You know, if you are trying to increase your lift capacity on your loader by 25% or something like that, you know, is the rest of the tractor, is the, 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 the loader assembly itself really designed to handle all that additional weight on a regular basis? I wouldn't think it's really engineered to do so. You know, it's a, it's a different loader, it's a bigger loader, a, a bigger beefier loader, a bigger tractor, all that kind of stuff that goes together for a loader that normally lifts more weight. It could be asking for trouble. You're most likely gonna be, I would think, voiding a manufacturer's warranty, maybe not, but um, it's, it's something to, to think about seriously before you do it because it's different than, I think, a car or a truck. Um, you're not doing the same kinds of work, I guess, with a car, you know, with a vehicle as you are with a tractor, you know, on a three point hitch, what does it really benefit you to lift a lot more weight? You know, it's, it's only going to be able to really handle a certain size attachment anyways. Um, if you're, if you're lifting it up and moving around, it's either going to be a four foot, a five foot, a six foot, regardless, in my opinion, to kind of safely and efficiently handle it. You know, a, a, the machine weight is not going to change all that much. The more you try to stress out your tractor, I think the more well, you're gonna shorten the life of it, in my opinion, and just get a bigger tractor if that's really the thing you're looking to do. You know, my mind continues to shift further away from wanting to use a mid-mount mower, and I do get the value of it. I do think that there's a benefit of having it on one machine to do everything with, less storage space, so lower cost, less maintenance, all that kind of stuff. But more and more, you know, it's, it's you know, you can go either way on this, but I think I would prefer just a separate machine to do my tractor work with, with the loader, with the three point and have a separate mower. You know, it could be a zero turn, could be a garden tractor, whatever it is to handle my mowing. 
oftentimes, you know, on a, on a mower like, or on a tractor like this with a mower that's not a drive on and drive off, you really don't want to take it off. And, and this deck has actually had to be straightened out. It had uh, damage on it being pushed in because the previous owner that had it didn't take this off and caught a gauge wheel over on the other side, I think it was, and bent the whole thing in. And even on a deck that is auto connect, like on the John Deere one series, it's the best design that's out there, but it's, it's still, <laughs> you know, we just don't like to take our mower decks off if we don't have to. And, and it's asking for something to happen to it. Um, it's a pain to have on there when you don't want it on, you know, and, and vice versa. It's just, extra time when you want to get a job done you don't want to worry about it. you just want to hop on the machine and go so i tend to lean more away from having a mid-mount mower kind of thinking that's overrated as much as it does i could i could i could sell you on the benefits of having it but for me i'm starting to steer away from it now this is going to sound weird i know but saving money is overrated and what i mean by that right is and i'm guilty of it too you know you want to save a buck so you're looking for the lowest price right up front and that could be um that beautiful vivor safety cage for the pallet forks that we reviewed last winter you know a, a common one is actually clamp on pallet forks you know a lot of a lot of guys think i'm just going to get a cheap set a couple hundred bucks whatever it is of clamp on pallet forks for the bucket they've actually turned out to be one of the, the biggest things that people upgrade from. So they start out with one of those, but in essence, they're kind of wasting their money because then they go out and get a quick attached set of forks because they realize the usefulness of them or the, um, the frustration that clamp on forks can, can bring. And so you're spending that money, kind of throwing it down the toilet, so to speak, just to go out and spend more money on what you should have done the first time around is get a good set of, of quick attach forks. The same thing can be said for, um, not across the board, but for some of the really budget brand attachments that are out there. Typically, if something is significantly less money than another brand, there's a reason for that. And that's not just in the tractor world. That's that's in any industry in existence, right? Something's got to give. If you're going to have something at a much lower price point, then you're going to have to sacrifice features or quality. And so if something's going to be a higher quality or more features, well, then you're probably going to have a higher price to go along with that. And, and let that kind of guide you as well. And that's okay if you're just trying to stay on a budget. I totally get it. But oftentimes those those items that cost a bit more are a bit more for good reason. And I'm asked these kinds of things a lot, right? Can you tell me what makes this attachment better than this one? And the first things I look at are gonna be weight of the attachment or the steel gauge thickness or the gearbox rating or what features and bells and whistles it has on it because those are the things that stand out right off the top and let you know is this deserving of a higher price tag? You know, our Kubota BX here has a couple of them on there that I think are overrated. And the first one, hard to see, but it comes standard with the quick attach loader is gonna be their single point hydraulic connection. Not that I don't think it's slick. It's a really cool design, really cool concept. I just think if, if you're on a budget like most of us are, and it's not standard, like on the John Deere's, you can get one on the 2038, for example. That's a hefty upcharge, all right? And there are scenarios if you have arthritis or just you know other reasons you would wanna get it from a functionality standpoint, by all means, go for it. But if you're looking to stay on a budget, that kind of thing is definitely overrated. It's really not that difficult just to connect four Pioneer couplers for your loader. Um, you know, things on the backside too, you can get them for. But on, on this tractor here in general, you just get it. It comes with it on here. so. It's built into the price, take it we can get it. <laughs> now this one, a lot of folks do not agree with me on, but that is gonna be a backhoe, and I, I talked about this one a lot in the, uh, the last overrated video, but you know, I, with, with all the land I have, I still don't use a backhoe very often at all. And I bought a mini excavator even, thinking I was gonna have all sorts of projects for it, and I think I've had it for almost a year now and put, I don't know, 10 hours on it. I just don't use a backhoe very often. So there's clearly something wrong with me. But let me explain, all right? And, and my perspective is not that a backhoe is bad, right? A backhoe is very good at what it can do. Um, a, a tractor backhoe can be very limited. You know, if you do go out and, and get a mini excavator, that can do a lot more um, than one of these little guys here. But most folks, not everybody, but most folks have a, a very short list of projects that they need that backhoe for. And then once those are done, they're never gonna use it again. It's gonna sit there and, and kind of rot away out in the field or something. And it's just a huge chunk of money, a big investment that's sitting there and, and doing nothing for you. So oftentimes I think it's just a very, well, it's something you should take a lot of time deciding, am I better off just going out and renting a mini excavator, you know, getting a backhoe that can get the job done a lot quicker or 
should I buy this backhoe, have it on here and, and have it tie up the three point. A lot of folks don't like taking it on and off to switch back and forth from the three point to the backhoe and that kind of thing too. So I, I get the argument on both sides of it. I just think for a consideration standpoint, this could be a budget buster right here. And, and keep it in mind, if you can cut it out and rent it, or maybe, hey, maybe get the, the front hoe bucket, the stump wrecker. If you just have smaller stuff to do, that could be a good, pretty affordable solution for you to consider as well. All right, so there was a big one that I changed my mind on that, again, a lot of folks really took disagreement with. And, uh, you know, this came in pretty handy recently for like the first time ever, and it's the locking rear differential, all right? And so it's normally something you push down with your heel, uh, gets you some more traction temporarily when you need it. And I will say up until like a month ago, maybe a few weeks ago, there'd still been never a scenario and i've been in a lot of a lot of sticky scenarios where the locking rear differential was useful but it was just enough to make a difference to get us unstuck when we were trying to get uh, the skid steer pulled out of a muck pit over there on the other side of the property and it proved its usefulness so while it certainly wouldn't be the first thing that i was making a checklist on a must-have list on my tractor it would definitely make the list at some point down the line, but the good news is, is that it is a standard feature on virtually every modern day tractor. So if you know of a modern day tractor that doesn't have it on there, I'd, I guess maybe mention that down below so somebody is aware, but uh, pretty standard equipment these days. So it's nice to know you have it, whether you need it or not. Alrighty folks, that's gonna wrap it up for us today. So there have been some changes, you know, as you get more time on well, with anything, more experience, your opinions shift and change, and for the most part, they, they stayed relatively the same, but uh, we'll see in another year or two. I'll probably have some more tweaks to this list as well, but that's just the way it goes. I'm sure there's some things that I forgot or left off the list. Leave a comment down below with those, or if you agree or disagree, we'd love to hear about it. Now, if you are in the market for something for your tractor, for the front end loader or the three-point hitch, we'd love to help you out. Check out goodworkstractors.com. We do sell and ship all over the country, and we'd love to have you tag along. It's completely free. Just hit that subscribe button right down below or follow us along on Facebook too. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.